Hello, I hope you're doing well. This episode of Awesome Amiga Rice looks at the Amiga's shell, which has been known by a few names, such as the CLI or Amiga DOS. The shell is the Amiga's command line interface, a bit like MS DOS. This video isn't intended as a full history of the Amiga's shell, or indeed, it's not intended as a beginner's instruction guide to it either, but rather a quick overview of what it is, where it came from, and some of its neat features that still amuse in 2020. The Amiga was fairly unique in not only allowing a graphical user interface in Workbench, which worked a bit like the Macintosh system software or the newly released Microsoft Windows, but it also supported a command line interface that multitasked with the rest of the system. The Amiga shell was derived from an operating system called Tripos that was already ported to the Motorola 68000 processor, which was at the heart of the Amiga. Whilst the Amiga already had part of its operating system created, the exec from Carl Sassenrath, it lacked an interface and a disk operating system. Dr Tim King of Metacomco, a British company, pitched Tripos to a number of companies like Atari and also others, but they already had their operating systems for their 68000 based machines. However, on meeting Amiga, he discovered they did not have an operating system. Dr. Tim King secured a deal to port Tripos from the Sage 4 workstation to the Amiga for the princely sum of £30,000. It was an insurance policy for Amiga, as they had already got a project underway with another developer to create the Amiga's disk operating system, which later got called the Commodore Amiga Operating System, or Chaos. This unfortunately fell through and the Tripos port became the Amiga's disk operating system, including the shell. Dr Tim King demonstrated Amiga and its shell to Tony Bassel and Guy Cuny on its ITV database programme in 1985, behind closed doors. Well Tim, as a, an emergency saver of the situation, you've come up with something which I gather is fairly impressive. How long did you have to develop the operating system? Well, we've had about six months in total, but we brought out a first production uh, development system in about a month. That is motoring, isn't it? That's going somewhere. Listen, late so from the very beginning, the Amiga had a command line interface. It was pretty primitive by today's standards, and Metacom code themselves even sold an extension to the CLI, as it was called in its earliest days, called the shell. This provided functions like variables and command line history. By 1988, with version 1.3 of the Amiga operating system, the CLI was improved with the new shell. This must have integrated most of Metacomco's shell software, providing that enhancements that were promoted in this 1987 advert, such as that command line history. It certainly made a difference to usability, but unfortunately, it still had most of its command base stored in disk rather than in ROM. This was corrected with Amiga OS 2.0 and later. As with most of the amazing Amiga OS series, I'll look at Amiga OS 2.0 and later primarily, and even include some 3.1 and later only features in this video. Just as a quick note, all of the commands and scripts that I refer to in this video are linked to in the video description for you to try out, but just be aware, you use them at your own risk, I don't give any warranty for their usage. First, let's look at some of the key shell files on your Amiga. The first one is a file stored in the S assign. If you type in the commands on the screen or available in the link in the video description, you'll find in the S assign a file called shell startup which allows you to customise what happens each time you open a shell. This allows you, for example, to create aliases. So, say for example, you're more used to typing in ls for a directory listing, rather than the Amiga's list command. A simple alias can do the job here. You can even create aliases for entire commands. Here, I've created an alias called dd, which is an alias for dire dyers. You can even customise the prompt for the shell in here, and do anything you do in a shell script, but a bit more on that in a bit. OK, let's switch to Amiga S 3.1 for the footage. One of the flaws of the shell in Workbench 1.3 and older is, say you had a directory listing and it scrolled beyond the size of the shell window. Even if you resized it, the listing will still be hidden. You would have to type the command in again and then review the command line output. In Amiga S 2.0 shell, it fixes this. Although, if again the shell command's output scrolled longer than the actual window's available height, you still would not be able to see all of it. But by being able to resize the window and see a bit more of the output, it does improve usability somewhat. We will look at a proper solution to the command output history later on in this video. You can also use copy and paste, so you can basically copy any output that the shell gives you, or the commands that you enter, and paste these into another application. 
pretty useful in 1990. If you view the shell's icon information by clicking on the icon, right clicking and choosing the icon menu and the information option, you can edit the window tool type to adjust the shell's window title and initial opening size and position. This is super useful. Ok, now let's look at one of the things overlooked because the Amiga's innate multitasking. But even from version 1.0 of the Amiga OS, you could open multiple shells, all multitasking at the same time, all doing their own thing. You're not stuck to looking at just one shell and its one output at the same time. Now let's look at something neat in Amiga OS 3.1. Request choice and request file. These allow you to have simple graphical user interface interactions to your shell scripts. For example, here is a simple requester asking you to choose one of three options. But how can we use this in a script? And what is a script? Well, a script is just a text file that is full of shell commands, which can be executed. You may also know this as a batch file. From this, you can direct the response of the requester into an environment variable and then test the response to direct the flow of your script. You can even prompt for a file requester to allow the user to choose a file or a drawer or maybe multiple files through a simple graphical user interface. It's pretty neat and shows some of the benefits of the Amiga shell in that it can leverage simple graphical user interface elements and bring them back into the shell scripts in a very slick way. This can even be enhanced much further with a product called GUI for CLI, which is an entire scripting language that builds complicated user interfaces that can leverage shell scripts. This was actually a product that I even registered back in the day, in the mid 90s, since Smatural Drachmar to Greece through the post to the program's author. So let's look a little bit closer at those variables on the shell. You have two types, simple variables that are local to the current shell process scope. Here we have two shell windows open, the same variable, animal and it has been set to a value. In the second shell process, you can see that you can't retrieve the same value. Each shell process does indeed have its own variable scope, but we can set an environment variable using setOnv, and this allows us to share the variable across shell processes. Just make sure you unset your local variables in your shell processes, as these will take precedence over environmental variables. We can use these environmental variables to store responses from commands like request choice and allow us to direct the flow of our scripts as previously described by referring to the variables using the dollar prefix to the variable. Now you can include the responses in your script. It's very cool. Even more neat is the fact you can set shell script arguments so you can supply for example a parameter and on executing the script and integrate that value into your script using the standard notation. You'll notice here that the .bra and .ket notations define the way that tokens can be used to wrap these parameters in your scripts. So here for example .bra or .bra and .ket will define that we're using square brackets to include parameters in our scripts. Here we can see that we can take the command line parameter and pass it in as a choice in the request choice command. It's pretty neat huh? There's so much more to Amiga shell scripting but this is just an overview that gives you a bit of a flavour for some of its very neat features. Ok, now let's look at some of the enhancements to the Amiga shell that you can install in your Amiga today. I'm looking at two very neat extensions that are compatible with Amiga OS 2.0 and later. There are many other enhancements out there, but I'm including two of these that I know that work very well for me and I have used them for many years. The first is Shell Screen. This one speaks for itself. One of the issues sometimes with the shell is it can get a bit fiddly when you're doing a lot of shell work on a small high res screen and you're trying to interact with the rest of the workbench and maybe some other applications and your shell screen is just getting in the way and flipping backwards and forwards can get a bit of a chore. Well what shell screen does is do exactly what it says in the tin. It opens a shell but on its own screen. It can make it a lot easier if you need to interact with the shell and you can just flip to the screen, enter your shell commands, flip back to the workbench and carry on. The next one is an essential enhancement to the shell and there are a few of these that fall under the same scope of this enhancement but the one I always turn to is one that's called King Con. Behind a clever name this adds essential usability enhancements like tab completion allowing you to complete paths and also commands. It allows easy use of intuition menus 
full scroll back history of shell history so no matter what the size of your shell window you can scroll back and see your full command line output it will also allow you to iconify your window so that when things get a bit busy on your workbench a simple click on the button will iconify the shell window allowing you to reopen it when you're ready so the installation of KingCon is very simple. Just use the supplied installer script, but you will need to make one little adjustment to your shell icon to make use of KingCon's enhanced shell. This allows you to test it out before you actually use it for all of your shell windows. Here I've clicked on the shell icon, right clicked, chose the icon menu and the information option. I've edited the window tool type and change the con device to the kcon device. By saving this, when I double click the shell icon, I will now get the kingcon enhanced shell. Here you can see the enhancement straight away. If you really like these enhancements, you can make them more permanent by editing a few lines in your user startup. Again, please note, I do not guarantee this will work on your Amiga, and any changes you make to your user startup file are entirely your own risk. If this stops your Amiga from working, I will not take any liability for this, however I can guarantee that this worked for me. If you want to make these changes, you'll find that the video description has a link to the commands that you need to copy and paste into your user startup file. Here I have unmounted the uh, con and raw handlers and remounted them as con and raw using the king con mount list. Now, whenever you open up a shell on your Amiga, it will make use of King Kong's enhanced shell. It's definitely a big improvement. One of the very coolest things though, is the fact that you can actually drag and drop drawers and files straight into your King Kong windows, and you'll find that it will paste in the directory or the drawer path that you've uh, dragged and dropped in, or indeed the file path that you've dragged and dropped in. It makes a huge difference to the Amiga shell. You'll also find that this is not a hack. The Amiga OS was always intended to be enhanced like this. In fact, this is exactly how Commodore enhanced the original CLI with the new shell in Amiga OS 1.3. It did this by replacing the original console handler with a new con handler in the L assign. This is just one of the very cool ways that Amiga OS has always been very extensible. There is so much more that I can go through in a future video, and indeed, I could also go through some of the other replacement shell handlers which are incredibly extensible and incredibly useful. But that's enough for this video. I hope you found it useful. I'd be interested to hear your comments in the video description. Don't forget that link in the video description as well as that will have all the commands that we've gone through. And I guess that all that remains for me to say is see you soon. Peace. So, it's come to that part of the video where I mention that I'm on Patreon. From as little as $2 a month, you can get early access to content, exclusive artwork through the post, your name mentioned on videos, as well as tips that I don't publish to the public. You can find a link in the video description below. Your subscription to my channel will also help me ensure that I can bring the latest content here from Japan.